Hello and welcome. Hi. Thank what, you. What do you go by? Charnel. Charnel. Okay. And yep. uh, help me understand, Charnel, what's your understanding of what we're doing here today? Um, I understand very little, I guess, but I did um, watch, um, they sent a link in the email and I did watch a video of an interview, um, but the lady didn't show her face or anything. Yeah. And yeah, I, I watched that. Okay. And it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, would it be helpful if I shared with you what we're shooting for today? That would be perfect. Yeah. So just to give you a little bit of background, I don't know, are you familiar with like other parts of our work or not so much? Not so much. Okay. So let me just tell you a little bit my, about myself. Okay. Um, my name is Alok. The internet knows me as Dr. K. Mm -hmm. I'm a kid who struggled with video game addiction. My parents were awesome and loving and stuff like that. They just didn't know mm -hmm. what to do. Mm -hmm. So I struggled for a while, basically failed out of college, um, put my life together, decided to go to med school at the age or started med school around the age of 28 and then wound mm -hmm. up becoming a psychiatrist. Wow. When I was becoming a psychiatrist, talked to a lot of my mentors about, mm -hmm. hey, what do y'all think about technology and video game addiction and stuff like that? And they didn't really know a whole lot. Um, so yeah. I, I started to think that this is like kind of a problem. And so I started uh, streaming on Twitch. Not sure if you're familiar with Twitch as a mm -hmm. platform. I am. And um, really actually just talking to gamers about why it's hard to stop playing video games. Mm -hmm. And that's where Healthy Gamer grew. Um, we're about four years old now. We reach about three to six million people a month. Wow. And as we've grown, the topics have also changed. Mm -hmm. So one thing that started happening very quickly was that I got a lot of parents reaching out to me and saying, hey, I've got a kid who's got a problem. Like, can you help them? And then so we actually started offering su support resources for parents. Great. And so now what we're trying to do is just have conversations with parents about mm -hmm. what it's like being a parent. <laughs> um, and then, you, you know, it's not we're not like looking for anything in particular. Sometimes conversations will get like kind of emotional. Mm -hmm. um, a, a couple of just things to share. So while I'm a psychiatrist, I'm not your doctor. I'm not going to be diagnosing you or treating you with any, for anything. Is that clear? Correct. Yes. And then the other thing is that, generally speaking, in the past, we've done live interviews, mm -hmm. um, but then that kind of puts people on the spot. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is an offline interview, which I think was what you had preferred. Is that correct? I think, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, but the goal is to hopefully upload at least a piece of this so that other parents can learn. Mm -hmm. We just want to have conversations with people and that we believe that, and this is actually why I started streaming in the first place. I was having the same conversation with kids over and over and over again, mm -hmm. literally like the same, like, here's how video games affect your brain. And so mm -hmm. I started to wonder, can we have one conversation that can help other people who can relate to what this person is going through? So that's really all we're doing. We don't have to like okay. do anything particular. And then if usually people will come and will have some kind of concern or, or question or something like that. And Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to try to help explain things or sort of, you know, explain whether it's neuroscience or psychology or clinical stuff. Um, or I, I spent seven years studying to become a monk. So sometimes that kind of stuff comes in and, okay. um, you know, that's kind of what we do. Okay. Does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's Charnel, is that right? Charnel, yes. Okay. So then any questions about that? Or should we get no, started? No, that was okay. pretty, yeah, I got it. Awesome. Well, first of all, Charnel, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank and then you. one last thing is that sure. uh, we don't have to talk about anything that you don't want to talk about. Okay. Um, so if I ask a question that feels off limits to you or anything like that, just let me know. If I see you're becoming uncomfortable, I may point that out to you and sort of say like, hey, is it okay to talk about this? We're mm -hmm. not in the business of like airing anyone's dirty laundry or anything like that. Okay. That being said, sometimes we do talk about things that are deeply personal that people are usually comfortable sharing. That's kind of why they come on. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, if, if at any point like this gets uploaded and you want us to take it down or anything like that, just let us know. We usually comply with that basically immediately or as soon as okay. we can. Right. Um, you know, we, yeah. So, so it's, it's really about helping you and helping anyone else who may be dealing with the same things that you're dealing with, which I imagine is millions of parents, <laughs> irrespective of what you're going to say. Right. <laughs> um, is that cool? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yes, great. Totally fine. So um, welcome, Charnel. And first of all, thank you very much for coming. 
Uh, you want to just tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what's kind of bringing you here today? Um, um, no, um, probably two issues, um, I guess. Well, not issues, but well, I guess we wouldn't be here if it, what, they weren't issues. <laughs> um, I have a 16-year-old son um, from a pre three, previous relationship. Um, I'm remarried, um, and I have a stepson who is uh, 19. Okay. And both gamers. Um, <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> but um, it's it's becoming. I, I worry because sometimes my nineteen year old he um, he's that's it's seems like that's all he wants to do a, a lot a lot and he seems to want to sleep during the day and be up during the night playing games quite a bit and um, I I don't mind him playing the games and I know he enjoys them and he'll show me hey this is what I'm doing on this game and I'll come take a look oh that looks pretty cool and whatnot. But um, I just, I guess I just want more for him, I guess. And I don't know how to approach him and talk to him about these certain things. And as far as my son, he, um, he, he, you know, not follows him, but he just goes into his room and he watches him play. And then he gets on the Xbox and plays quite a bit. And he ends up staying up way too late on school nights when he knows better. I mean, I, I usually try to let him decide when he's you know ready to go to sleep or ready to go to bed but i try to you know, i'll start getting on him about 10 30 11 o'clock and then it's like come on jonathan you have to go to school in the morning you're i don't want you to be tired so and he pushes the limit you know many nights and um but then after he leaves um you know his stepbrother's room he goes into his bedroom and he's got his cell phone and he's got another game he plays on his cell phone as well so it's just it's kind of challenging sometimes. It try, I just don't know where to start to try to help them or explain to them, these are the things that I would prefer you to do, but, and have them really understand and just have a great conversation about all of this wow. is really, yeah. I, I got to like say one thing. So, sure. you, you, you know, you, you hear horror stories about stepmothers, but your stepson sounds very lucky to have you. No. <laughs> Well, thank you. Yeah, um, he um, he lost his uh, mother um, about a year and a half ago, actually. Oh my goodness. So, and I'm I'm thinking that's that's probably one of the reasons why he is you know doing the gaming stuff a lot more than what he used to. I mean, he's always been a gamer, but it just seems to be more and more. And I think he's probably using that. And I'm sure we probably need to get him into some counseling of some kind, just to, so he'll talk to someone, you know, other than just us, because he doesn't open up to us too terribly much. Okay. His dad and I, so yeah. That that's something that we're seeing more and more. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know certainly when I was struggling, my parents tried talking to me, but mm -hmm. um, I wasn't really opening up to them, and I didn't even know how. So we can we can certainly talk about that a little bit. Okay. And help me understand. Um, so it sounds like you're married now. Yes. And um, your husband has one child? Yes, okay. from a previous relationship as well, yes. And, and so what does your husband think about all this stuff? Um, not too terribly much. He's kind of, he's very lenient on them both. Um, he's kind of the yes man, I guess you would say, and I'm more the disciplinarian, I guess. Um, I try to, I would like to try to keep, you know, them on a, not a set schedule really, but, you know, structure and, uh, you know, have kind of a, not a set bedtime. Oh, you have to be in bed by such and such time or whatnot, but just, in, you know, set some rules and boundaries and whatnot. And he's very the opposite. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm hearing that you're sort of fighting like an uphill battle. A little bit. And I'm also hearing that you're able to notice a couple of patterns like that. You said that uh, you start getting on him at 1030. <laughs> so so I get the sense that like, you know, every day around 930, you kind of go and you strap on your armor and then you start wading into battle and you're you're going to do your first charge at the enemy line. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to kind of oh, not yeah. work. And then you kind of <laughs> do it again and you do it again. And, it, and with a lot of effort on a daily basis, yes. you can uproot him and then he goes to his room yeah and he pulls out the cell phone <laughs> and yeah. so it's like even though you gave everything to win this battle mm -hmm. you're still losing the war exactly that yeah. sounds tough <laughs> yeah, it's 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 getting to the point where i just i just give in you know i just say 
just, okay, you're 16, just do whatever, you know, and I don't want to be that way. I want to help him figure out why he thinks he needs to be on the phone for so long and why he needs to, yeah, it's just, yeah. And then in the mornings, it's very difficult. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but um, because he won't get up in the mornings because we're here, we are, you know, stayed up way too late the night before, and then he's got to get up and get ready for school and just, yeah, yeah, every day. Yeah. And so I'm hearing that Charnel wakes up in the morning and it's got to put puts on your armor and then you go yes. back and it's time to mm-hmm. wake up. What does mm-hmm. waking up look like? Um, coming in there at such and such about 645 in the morning because he wants to take a shower every morning. And then 645, Jonathan, it's time to get up. Um, give me a few more minutes. Ten minutes later, get up, Jonathan. It's seven o'clock. Time to get it, and just on and on and on until it's right before he has to jump out of bed, brush his teeth, and just be out the door. So yeah. So does he end up showering or? Sometimes yes. So, okay. Sometimes no. So, so yeah. So it's kind of waits till the last minute, and then mm-hmm. what really gets him out of bed is like consequences, like you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna be late and whatnot. So yeah. And, and Charnel, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was okay. nothing. No. Um. So let me ask you, you said you don't want to be that way. So you said that you've kind of like given up, right? Or given in. A little and, bit, and yeah. Then, and then you said like, I don't want to be that way. What, what What do you mean by that? What way is that? I don't want to be real pushy or argumentative with them. I don't want to be the one always, you know, getting on to them or just, yeah, I just feel like I'm the bad guy a lot of the times and I don't want to be. Okay, what do you want to be? Um, the good guy, of course. <laughs> um, I really, don't, I don't know. It's that's. I want them to be able to be comfortable. I mean, I think they're comfortable around me. It's just sounds like they certainly they, are. They feel like, huh? <laughs> sounds like they certainly are. Yeah. Um, I would just rather than sometimes I think they get uncomfortable or they think here, here, oh, here comes mom, here comes Charnel. She's going to get on to us about something or she's going to say something about, you know, we need to do this or we need to do that. I just feel like they're maybe walking on eggshells a little bit around me because of it. So I need to learn to not be so, um, I guess, the drill sergeant, I guess, I need to, you know, and. And I hope that one day maybe they'll just want to do these things on their own, but that's wishful thinking. But I know that's further along down the road, but yeah. Um, so I, I'm wondering, so I'm, I'm meeting someone who's clearly very polite, thoughtful, uh, very attentive. Um, I, I'm wondering when you use the word drill sergeant, what, what, what <laughs> I, I'm not, I feel like that's not the person I'm talking to. What does that look like at home sometimes? Oh, it can get ugly sometimes. I uh, I do raise my voice. I I will admit, and I know it's not right to do that, um, because I I get to the point to where it's just so frustrating because nobody listens. Nobody wants to do what I need them to do or what I would like for them to do, and then by that point, I'm just yeah. I just have to raise my voice, and I don't have to, but I choose to, and it's not right, and I don't like that about myself. I need to just be more calm and approach it a different way. And I'm still working on that. And I know I'm not the perfect mom and I, I'm going to have good days and bad days, but I, I struggle with that too, trying to be more chill about it, I guess. My husband, he's so laid back and chill about all of it. And I just wish I could be more like that. Well, I mean, it sounds to me like you can't afford to be more like that. Well, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Cause if, I mean, if Charnel's chill, <laughs> how does stuff happen? Like, what time does Jonathan go to school? Um, and, uh, so he has to be there by eight before I, eight. I know, but if you didn't wake him up, what time would he go to school? Oh, I know. Yeah. He would not probably, he would choose not to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So what, I, what I'm mm-hmm. hearing is you, oh, you sound kind of stuck to me where like on the one hand you're nagging, you're yelling profanity. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. Yeah. Not, no, not so much. I've really worked on it. I might say, awesome. you know, a few, you know, words here and there, nothing bad, bad, but okay. no, not, not so much. No. Okay. So, so I'm hearing that you get upset, but it's, it's I usually do. like time to get out of bed. Mm-hmm. You know, I've told you three times, mm-hmm. you know, what about like, but I'm, I'm really hearing that like, you're kind of damned if you do damned if you don't, pardon me for saying. Yeah, I am. 
Yes. So that, that sounds hard. How do you, what's that like for you to be kind of stuck? Very, it's not, I don't know. I don't even have the words to describe how it feels. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm not on a team with my husband sometimes. It makes me feel like I'm just me against the three of them. And it's, it's, yeah, uphill battle every day, all the time. And I deal with it okay. It just, it gets a little lonely, but um, I want to try to make this better. And yeah. I hope, yeah, I hope they're willing to make this better. And I know they are. It's just, I need to learn how to approach all of this calmly and to where they'll listen and understand what I'm trying to say, to get my point across. So Charnel, you seem like a wonderful person. Because here you are talking about all the stuff that you need to be doing better, right? I need to be calmer. I need to be more patient. Mm -hmm. I need to. I need to be. I'm. You know. I. I'm, I ain't perfect. I hear that. No one's perfect. But mm -hmm. you really seem intentionally to be working. I hell, you even came here today. <laughs> yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. what should they be doing better? What's their responsibility? Um. To not do much i don't know they they kind of have chores they don't have many chores they don't have many things no not many honeydews either it's just i yeah i feel like i'm kind of running the household in a way and i don't want it to be that way i would like it to be a group effort if we could you know absolutely so I, i'd love to help you talk to you maybe a little bit and see if we can help you do that okay. the good news is that we've done that a lot with people <laughs> so I, i'm hearing a lot of good things about your situation like I don't um, I'm not hearing any like overt toxicity so are, are we dealing with things like kids or you know are they using profanity with you or police getting called or like no, anything like no, that okay no they're they're good kids they really okay. are great kids I mean they just gotten lazy and just a little bit you know want to do whatever they want to do with no rules with no chores no you know it's just been a little frustrating. Of course. Uh, it sounds like more than a little frustrating. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. It, I mean, it sounds like you're kind of being pushed into being the sole bad guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you stop being the bad guy, then stuff doesn't happen. Right. What's that right. like? Um, Very frustrating. Very frustrating. What's frustrating? I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. What were you going to no, ask? You, please. Um, It's just frustrating because I feel like I have to do if it doesn't it doesn't get done unless I can jump in there and do it and then if I ask them to do it oh well it takes another 10 minutes and then nothing from them and I have to ask them repeatedly and it just gets to the point where I just give up and say I'll just do it myself you know yeah yeah it's so, stressful. and you, you said that your your husband is pretty lenient mm -hmm. what does he think about his son's behavior future um i'm not sure really i mean we've talked about it um and i asked him to you know do you want more for for him for chance and do you want him to do better do you want him to go to school or further his education and he's i i know what he's doing he's just trying not to be too hard on him because he did lose his mom you know a little over a year and a half ago and i think he's just catering to him quite a bit and and I do too sometimes but I mean I can't imagine what it would be like to to lose your mother when you're 18 years old so it, it, I don't want to imagine I'm, I know it's difficult and um I just I truly really try to keep a close eye on him to make sure that he is okay because I don't if I see him you know start to have certain behaviors or whatnot to where he, he might be in, you know, really depressed or something, we, then we definitely would step in and get him some help and whatnot. But he's not, he's not to that point, I don't think. I really don't, at least well, I hope not. He doesn't seem to be anyway. What kinds of stuff are you on the lookout for? Um, just being in his room all of the time uh, with the door shut, never coming out. Um, which he does. He comes out often, hangs out with us. He'll watch a movie with us. All, all four of us will get in, go in the living room, watch a movie, and watch some stuff on TV, YouTube, and whatnot. Um, we have dinner together. Uh, not so much anymore. Um, we're in the process of trying to get a dining room, a new dining room table into our kitchen. So everybody kind of just goes to their own bedroom and eats alone. But okay, yeah, um, 
we, we make an effort to do stuff with the boys. I mean, we try, yeah. but they're just at the age they don't want to hang out with, you know, mom, stepdad, stepdad and mom, you know? Yeah, yeah of course. It sounds like y'all are really devoted parents. We try to be, yeah. Yeah. We try. And I, I, so I'm, I'm not hearing like, quote unquote, problems at home. No, okay. no. And yeah. Any, any, how's your relationship with your husband? It's pretty good. Yes, um, it's really good. We, he's my best friend. We, we can talk about anything, and we talk about anything and everything all the time. You know, hopes, goals, dreams of ours, what we would like to do in the future, and um, he's a. Uh, He's he's amazing. He's a really great husband. He works really hard. He's a, a great provider. Um, he loves me very much. He loves his son so much and my son. And he's just got a great heart. Love him a lot. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it, it definitely shows through. Um, can I ask a couple questions about that? Sure. What do you all want? Um, well, we want the kids to eventually go away. <laughs> 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 no, Um we would like to have a home. Um, well, we talked about moving to Colorado at some point to the mountains. Um, he enjoys hiking and jeeping and being outdoors, camping. We both really like that a lot. We used to do that a lot um, when we first started dating, but we've kind of, you know, pandemic hit and then it kind of changed everything after that. So, um, yeah, it's just been hard to get out and do that kind of stuff anymore so and plus the guys were younger back then and they were willing to do that but not so much anymore they want to be with their friends and hang out which i get that and girlfriends and stuff so yeah and then school activities they have girlfriends? uh my son does yes okay yep. what's she like she's pretty awesome actually she's real petite sweet the most beautiful little girl ever and um i think they just make the sweetest little couple i like her a lot wow yeah, yeah. that, that she, shows through too yeah she's a really good person i like her okay and how long have you and your husband been together uh we've been together a total of nine years and we're about to have our fifth anniversary wedding okay. anniversary, yeah. and so um have you had a parenting role in your stepson's life for how long have you had kind of a parenting role there? Um, probably uh, it really started, I guess, right after we got married because we all moved in together and whatnot. But um, I mean, I kind of did a little bit before we got married, but not too terribly much. But I usually don't discipline him very much. I leave that up to his dad. You know, um, I would get, you know, read stuff online and say, do you? try to parent the stepchild do you try to tell them what they can and can't do because i'm not his mother i'm not going to try to replace his mother and um i you know there's a fine line between do you where do you step in and do something and when do you not but i i care about him very much and i love him and um I want the best for him and I would des definitely discipline him if he I thought he really needed or get on to him about something but it's, I don't want to be that overbearing stepmom that, oh, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. You know, I just, yeah. Yeah. So I, I noticed you're, Charnel, you're trying really hard to not slip into being the wrong kind of mom. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you can say that. Yeah. Right. Like I, I really hear that, that you're, you're really thoughtful about like, okay, what is, what is this, what is my stepson's experience of interacting with me? And I'll discipline if I need to, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like kind of sort of not my place, but also like I want to kind of be respectful and you kind of want him to be independent. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I'm sort of hearing is that like, y you know, you're in between a lot of different things, but mm -hmm. it seems like everything seems to be moving in the wrong direction. So you want him to be independent, <laughs> but you end up nagging him. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to respect your husband's primary disciplinary role with his son like you want to respect that right you've thought a yes. lot about what does it mean to be a stepmom i don't want to come in here lay down the law <laughs> you know and, right and, um but like it's kind of like i i see everything that you're building if everything went it's kind of like a coin flip 
like if everything goes well, then they sort of, you know, really appreciate you help, but you nudge them a little bit and then they kind of act independently. Your dad, I mean, your husband is stepping in a little bit more as a disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. Everything kind of could go the right way, but I'm sort of feeling like everything's like ending up going the wrong way that mm -hmm. you want them to be independent, but the, they need you to nag them. Yeah. You know, and, and that you want to be respectful of your husband's disciplinary choices, but it's not moving in the right direction. Correct. Yes. And I'm also hearing that things aren't falling apart so much as like this train ain't moving in the right direction. Right. So what help me understand a little bit about what would be most helpful to you? Um, someone come in and just raise them the rest of it for me and get them to know. Um, I really don't know. That's why I'm just at a loss right now. I'm just kind of trying to wrap my head around everything and just trying to figure everything out and how to approach things with my son, how to approach things with my stepson, how to approach things with my husband and try to get everybody on the same page. It's, it's difficult. It's very difficult. Absolutely. So can I just he repeat back why I think it's really hard for you to manage this stuff? Sure. So I yeah. think that there's so many variables. Mm -hmm. So there's the stepson dynamic. Mm -hmm. There's the, I want him to be independent dynamic. Mm -hmm. There's the boys will be boys dynamic. Mm -hmm. There's the, now that they're a little bit older, they get to make choices for himself. And I don't want to force them when they were 12. I could force slash encourage them to go camping, mm -hmm. but I can't really force them in the same way. Right. There's also the grieving dynamic. Mm -hmm. Right. And then mm -hmm. there's like the, okay. So on the one hand, you know, my husband gets to decide how to parent his kid. And mm -hmm. like, I'm happy to support that. I'm happy. We're kind of a family, but you're taking a back seat. And then that gets complicated because your 16 year old has this 19 year old in the house. Mm -hmm. And so you're kind of stuck there because if you don't discipline the 19 year old and the 19 year old kind of goes off track and like, and does he really need harsh discipline because maybe it's grief and like, I don't want to push him too far. And then even if you're like super careful about that, well, then you still have a 16 year old who maybe doesn't understand all of these nuances. And all the 16 year old sees is, hey, my stepbrother gets to stay up as late as he wants to. Why do I have to go to bed? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that sounds hard. It's like, where do you start? Like. Do you get pissed at your husband? Do you get pissed at your kids? Do you get pissed at your stepson? How pissed do you get at your stepson? Because he's grieving and he lost his mom, so you can't get super pissed. Right. And if you get pissed at your son because he didn't lose his mom, thank God. But then, then you're treating him different. And then, like, sounds yeah. like one hell of a pickle, Charnel. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it can be some days. It's, it's, it's difficult, but I try my level best to try to keep from going crazy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I can absolutely see that you are trying your level best. And boy, are they lucky. But all three men in your house are very lucky to have you. <laughs> well, I, I think they know that sometimes, but I'm not sure some days. Yeah, yeah. it can be tough. Mm -hmm. So let's try to unpack this a little bit. How's that sure. sound? Okay, sounds great. Um, can I just think for a second? Sure, of course. If I can take a drink of coffee. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Do the kids like outdoor stuff? They do. They really like fishing. Um, they like that a lot. They want to go camping. Um, we've talked about going to Colorado on vacation this year some at some point to um, camp in Colorado. Um, yeah, they love being outside. Okay. Um, and then so, and how many hours of games would you say they play a day? Oh, geez. Um too much, too many, um, a lot, probably it is a lot to me because I'm not a gamer. I don't get it. I don't understand any of it. Um, probably a good eight to 10 hours, maybe some days. Okay. I mean, sometimes not so much. Sometimes they don't even get on the games at all. I mean, okay. those are, you know, rare days, but yeah, it happens. Okay. So I'm, I'm seeing some, some bright spots there. Yeah. Right, so some, and, and then what does the 19 year old do during the day? Sleep. <laughs> okay. So yeah. it sounds like basically he's, he's not in school or working no. or anything like that. No. And, and how to, how, how does everybody feel about that? 
Um, I, I'm I'm okay with that. I mean, um, for now, but it's he's. Uh, I would like for him to you know eventually get out of the house more and do you know do something you know productive. Um, I want him to have some hopes and dreams and goals and be able to accomplish those things and you know to be a productive adult and go out there and be on his own at some point. Yeah. But yeah, I just, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Oh, I I was done. That's it. Yeah. And how does your husband feel about him kind of sleeping during the day? Not much. I mean, he's, he allows it. Um, I would like for him to be on a day schedule to try to be up, you know, with everybody else and going to bed, but it just never happens. It started to happen halfway through summer but it didn't yeah didn't work okay so Chanel, i'm gonna ask you mm-hmm. do you want to talk about doing a lot that is going to be harder or do you want to do something small that's going to be easier a lot that's going to be harder okay so let me just start by explaining a couple of things as i understand them Okay, Mm -hmm. because I think some of the stuff that you're doing is comes from the right place. Mm -hmm. The challenge is that video games have like changed the world. Yeah. So so what's happened is that there are a lot of things that parents we've been taught to do. And how did we learn to do them? Because it's what our parents did. Mm -hmm. So like when I sort of think a little bit about like how if I were to ask you, like, how much did your parents force you to do stuff? Did how much did they force me to do stuff? Um, my mom, not so much. My dad, yes, big time. Yes. And, and what what was that like? What was your home life like? Um, actually, it was really great. My dad was a military guy, um, very strict, you know, structured, very much on time. You have to do this and this and this, you know, at a certain time and whatnot. Um, he was a little over demanding, you know, too much from us sometimes, but. I, I, it wasn't too terrible. Um, he was an alcoholic. Um, saw my parents, you know, fight sometimes, but it wasn't anything too terrible. I had a pretty good childhood, actually. But he was very strict, so very strict. And yes, it was it was tough sometimes, but I made it. And I appreciated him being strict on us. And I appreciated him being, you know, setting rules and making us do chores and setting boundaries and whatnot. I really do appreciate that. So. Yeah, I've always tried to be that way, but not like the drill sergeant like my dad was. But, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, you know, right? Because mm-hmm, I know it helps me, and I know I feel like I'm a better person for it. So, yeah. Yeah, and I so I was a little bit confused about, you know, I asked you what kind of, you said, I don't want to be that way. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what way don't you want to be? And I'm wondering if you basically don't want to be the worst versions of your dad. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that what you're really like, you can see like you can see it. You kind mm-hmm. of feel me like you can see it mm-hmm. coming up and you're starting to behave like because that's what you learn how to do. Right. When mm-hmm. when yeah. stuff isn't going right, you know, time, yes. to, time to get things. And, and I can see you kind of be almost pull back from that because it sounds like some, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, disparage your dad in any way. No, 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 no. At I don't. The, and at no. the same time, I think that like it's important to understand that some of you, I'm getting that emotional reluctance to cross a certain line right yeah. right and you want to yeah. be like supportive but firm okay yes. so let's start from the top can you fix this problem charnel of course i can incorrect that's your first mistake <laughs> darn okay mm-hmm. why would i say you can't fix this um because it it's going to take everybody to... 100%. It. <laughs> right? So this is what I mean. Mm-hmm. So this is where, like, y'all parents, right? And I'm guilty of this. You're trying to do it all. It's just not going to work. Yeah. Right? So I, I know it's, it's the first of many questions you're going to get wrong today. Okay. 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 <laughs> so, so then the question kind of becomes, and I think you've, you've tried, like, if some, if a single parent and i don't mean like single parent but if if right. one parent mm-hmm. could do this if It'd charnel can't do it it cannot be done that's right <laughs> daughter of drill sergeant loving <laughs> good god likes her 16 your baby boy's 16 and you actually <laughs> like his petite girlfriend oh my <laughs> goodness 
I Who do. is this saint and where did she come from? <laughs> right? Right, yeah. To have your husband basically mentally check out at home. <laughs> and to say, like, yeah, he's a really good provider. He loves me. He's my best friend. But he doesn't fucking wake up his kids in the morning. Pardon my language. <laughs> right. I know. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be a little bit. I can see how you're talking. So I'm going to pump up the volume a little bit on my end. Okay. Okay. So and I, I, I like I'm going to say it. If if anyone could do it. It's you. <laughs> but you haven't succeeded so far, and I don't think it's possible. Right. So the first thing, and I think you know this too, you're, you're kind of like, you know, you'll talk to your husband, you'll say, do you want him? Do you have more? Do you want this? Do you want this? Right? And it's, it's kind of like, I almost feel like there's a, that's not a question. What I'm really hearing you say there when you talk to your husband or ask him questions is, hey, don't you realize that he's not going to have this? That he's not going to have this? Don't you see that this is a problem? You understand mm -hmm. that? Those oh, aren't yeah. questions. Those are, hey, wake up. Exactly. And how does he respond to that? He doesn't. Doesn't at all, really. It's just I, I say these things and it goes in one ear and out the other. And I've had these conversations with him so many times and it's like, I get nowhere with it, really. Okay, so you use the word conversation. It doesn't sound like a conversation. It sounds like a lecture. Yeah, probably. Right. So, and that's not your fault. What I'm hearing is that he doesn't engage. Does he literally say anything? Exactly. No, he doesn't. That's yeah. He, he literally doesn't say a word. For the yeah, most of the times he does not. Okay. He just says, "I know, Charnel. I know," and that's about the gist of it. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you've been married a couple of years. When a husband says, "I know, Charnel. I know," what does he mean? <laughs> he means just hush and go away <laughs> right mm -hmm. it means hey i can't handle this right now right right yeah. it means mm -hmm. like i know you're not wrong but i don't know what to do about it yeah how do you think your husband feels about this situation um i think he feels he wish he would have uh not married me? No. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I think he, I, I think he gets annoyed of me, you know, saying these things to him. And I backed off so much that I just, I Good. bring stuff up every once in a while, but not, not as often as I used to. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's t That's mm -hmm. a tough place to be in. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's understand a couple of things. Okay. Okay. The first thing is, let's let's start by understanding behavioral reinforcement. So if I go and I say, Charnel, rent's due at the end of the month, and you don't pay me. And then I show up at, a couple days later, hey, rent's due at the end of the month. Hey, rent's due, rent's due, rent's due, rent is passed, rent is passed. Hey, like, rent is passed. What am I actually reinforcing? nothing <laughs> so what i'm actually reinforcing is you can ignore my words mm -hmm. right so you tell him hey it's time to wake up and what are the consequences if your son doesn't wake up none there's no consequences so why would he change his behavior exactly charnel's charnel's got it under control he's got mama mama's there to take care of him mm -hmm. get him out of bed 16 year old boy mm -hmm. behaving like a six-year-old come on kiddo Mm -hmm. Time to wake up. Mm -hmm. He's got games and a phone. Doesn't seem to use an alarm function on there. <laughs> so the first oh. thing, it, and this is something that happens with 99% of parents. I do this too. I know this and I do this. Mm -hmm. We end up reinforcing the wrong behavior, right? So if we sort of think about understanding behavioral reinforcement, what is the consequence if I don't get up? There is none. And this is the other thing that's happening is that there is a shift of responsibility to you. And once you start carrying the responsibility of things that he should be responsible for, it's like you're in, you're in the passenger seat, he's in the driver's seat, I'm going to get drunk every day and, and take my hands off the wheel and I don't have to worry about it because mom's over there steering the wheel and mm -hmm. making sure the car doesn't crash. You right. protect your child 
your children and your husband from mm -hmm. the consequences of their actions. Mm -hmm. This is generally speaking what good parents are supposed to do, <laughs> right? Hey, kid, don't hold the firework close to your eye. It is my job as a parent in this world to protect you mm -hmm. and keep you safe. I think the challenge is that, like, if we're not careful, we start actually reinforcing the wrong behaviors. And basically, there's just, like, not consequences. So mm -hmm. if you kind of go to him and you say, hey, 1030, it's time to stop. And then he doesn't stop. What you're, what are you teaching him? Nothing. You're teaching him something. You're teaching him that you can be ignored. Yeah. Right? Because there's no consequences. Right. It's like a dog yip yapping at my mm -hmm. heels that's never going to bite. Right. So one thing that you've got to be super careful about, and this is something that I recommend for all parents, is that mm -hmm. you should stick with your word. So if you say something is going to happen, something is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So the more, if I say something is going to happen 10 times and it never happens, hey, I'm going to be by to see you. I've got a gift. <laughs> don't show up next day. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll hit you up tomorrow. I've got a gift. The more that I say that and I don't show up with a gift, like what you're just going to st stop believing me. And what your kids have done, and probably what your husband has done too, is it sounds like you nag them, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that too, I don't blame you for. I think it's that's the, the consequence of you carrying responsibility for everybody. Mm -hmm. So like when you start nagging people, you lose sight of the meat, like the value of your words. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would recommend for you is that don't say you're going to do anything that you're not willing to do. Okay. And what this sort of means is like, like if you say something, it's going to happen. There's no difference between Charnel's world, I mean, uh, words and like how the world functions. So, you know, I imagine that your dad, when he said something, usually meant it, right? So if he said, like, mm -hmm. this needs to be done, it needs to be done. And I think mm -hmm. that, and now we got to talk a little bit about gaming. So gaming is addictive. And the problem is that gaming will find, it's kind of like water. Like, it'll find any crack that's there. So any discrepancy of parenting styles breeds gaming addiction. Any mm. amount of, like, inconsistency with enforcement breeds gaming addiction. My parents were the same way. They'd come in and they'd say, hey, you need to stop. And then occasionally what would happen is, like, I don't know if this is going to make sense to you, but I'd be able to tell, like, if I really needed to stop. I'd be able to tell in my parents, because my parents would blow up too, right? Because they'd tell me, like, 15 times. And then the 16th time they come in and they're like, and then there were consequences. Right, right. Random reinforcement that felt really disproportionate. And then I actually felt they were being unfair because they told me to stop 16 times, 15 times, and there was no punishment. And now I'm suddenly getting a gigantic punishment on the 16th time. Right. That yeah. doesn't even feel fair to me. It's like, this is like what? <laughs> like, you know, for 15 days, you've let it slide. Like, why is day 16 different? Right. Yeah. So then even when they were trying to enforce things, like, I didn't see the logic of it because they weren't being consistent. Right. Okay. So... Okay. And I'm, I'm guessing the same way. And I, I, I bet if I had a chance to talk to your kids, they can tell that on some days they need to listen to mom. That the yes. short fuse, like they can sniff it out, right? Mm -hmm. But then the problem is they can also sniff out like when you're, oh my God, like I'm Chanel, I need to be a better mom. I'm going to be calm or <laughs> I need to not raise my voice. And when, 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 that, when that mom is behind the wheel, they're like, great, open yeah. season. I can play as long as I want to. Mom's being nice today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? They you know did. the difference? I'm sorry. You, you see that difference? Is that what mm -hmm. happens at home? Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. Yep. And so what are some of the harsh punishments that you've done? <laughs> Recently, not much. Okay. Yeah. It used to be um, taking the cell phone, and I just haven't done that in so long. It's just, I almost feel guilty if I were to do that now. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. What, really what, would. What, what would make you feel guilty about that? Um, because I, it, it shouldn't make me feel guilty. I know that it just, it would, because I feel like I'm punishing him too harshly for something. And that's not, I don't know. It's, it's crazy how it's all the tables have turned and it makes, I feel like the bad guy. I feel guilty for doing that. You know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Weird, huh? It's very, yeah. So like now you, you, you know, it's not one V three. There are four people on the enemy team. One mm -hmm. of them is Charnel. Yeah. 
right? So so maybe mm -hmm. I'm going to venture something like is taking the cell phone. Is that something your dad would have done? Oh, yeah. Right. So I think that yeah. like anything that maybe your dad would have done maybe feels too harsh for you. Probably. Yeah. Right. So like and this is this is another important part we're going to get to. Your health is very important here. So we're mm -hmm. talking about how everybody like you, you need to do better and you need to like you need to I, I, I get a lot of this from you already, but like some compassion and some amount of I shouldn't feel guilty. No, no, no. Uh, uh, girl, you're allowed to feel guilty. Right. So whatever you feel, try to understand where that comes from, because it's that kind of guilt that's going to sabotage your efforts because they know when push comes to shove, like mom's going to crack. Mm hmm. Right. And, and once they have that weapon in their arsenal, it's like a nuclear weapon, like any showdown, like they know they can win if they can make you feel guilty. Yeah. Yeah. You're saying you said a yeah, that was a very meaningful. Yeah. Is there something that comes <laughs> to mind? Is there like an occurrence that you can think of or? No, it's just you're just you're right. You're, everything you're saying is, yeah, I can think of times when, yeah, I, I do feel that way. And they yeah, they do feel that way as well. I know they do. And How they take know? advantage. They take advantage and they push it, you know. When what does they, that look like? Um, it looks like um, when they ask permission to do something and I don't really want them to do it, but I go ahead and I, it's just one of those days and I say, sure, go right ahead. And then they take it another step further and they, well, can we do this and do this too? And it's like, well, sure, go right ahead. You know, it's that. Yeah. yeah. So it, it sounds like they know where the cracks are in the armor. Mm -hmm. You know, and, oh, and yeah. they, they kind of they, they know when they can wheedle out. They know when mom can be ignored. They mm -hmm. know when mom like is feeling kind of guilty. So then they can ask. Mm -hmm. And if they ask right away for everything, then then you're going to say no. Right. They've even learned to ask, hey, can we do a little bit? Can we do a little mm -hmm. bit more? So they're. Mm -hmm. it's tough. Oh, they're, they're working. It. They're milking it. And yeah, yeah. They're, they know what they're doing. <laughs> oh, so, yeah first thing to think a little bit about is just what you're truly reinforcing. Okay. Okay. Second thing to think a little bit about is your own emotions and your own wellness. So I think that you being emotionally tranquil is critical for you to succeed at this. Okay. And the reason for that is like, you can't, you can't let anger lead to enforcement and you can't let guilt lead to sabotage because then what they're going to learn is that like, the game we need to play is not listening to mom. The game we need to play is like, which do we have Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde today? Like, who, who do we have? And then if mm -hmm. mom's going to be pissed, then we're going to be nice. But if she's <laughs> not going to be pissed, in both cases, do you see how your emotions are in control of you? Yes. That needs to stop. Okay. Okay. And I, I can't just tell you that needs to stop and then it goes away. That's not how it works. Yeah, right, so we'll right. talk a little bit about how to do all this stuff. So I just, I'm just going to lay out a couple things. The next thing that needs to happen is that video game addiction grow is fertile fertilizer for video game addiction is inconsistent parenting, especially between two parents. Mm -hmm. So thankfully, you're actually in not the worst scenario. Usually the worst scenarios that we tend to see are divorced parents where as part of that disruption um that the gaming becomes a weapon that one ex will use against the other to like win their child's affection like those kinds of situations are really really bad but they'll almost weaponize gaming mm -hmm. and you know kid wants to stay with dad because dad doesn't set any limits or kid wants to stay with mom because mom doesn't set any limits right doesn't want to be with dad yeah dad i don't want to come on my weekend i want to hang out here and mm -hmm. then you know it can get really ugly. So the good news is it sounds like you and your, your husband are at least like, it sounds like your family for the most part is kind of on the same page. Yes. Like I'm not hearing that y'all really at, at its core are not a team. Yes. So, but I, I think what's going to have to happen is that you're not going to be able to police your kids with your husband. I don't want to say sabotaging, but it's a two person job. Like parenting is like a two person job. And yes. when your dad, when your husband is being lenient, when your stepson's dad is being lenient, it's going to be really hard for like, if there's inconsistency, just like water finds a way. Like if, if there's, it doesn't matter. I mean, if I have a ceiling and I patch up one crack, but there's another crack, I'm still going to get dripping. Yeah. And so I'm going to share with you a couple of things to like talk to your husband about. 
Okay. The so first thing that I'd recommend is that you ask questions instead of tell him things. Okay. Right. So sometimes I hear that when you have a conversation with him, that conversation is actually driven by your emotions. Do you want him to be like this? Do you want this? Do you want this? Right. So in what's going on there? Let's understand that. You're trying to give him space. The, the dude works hard. He's your best friend. He's trying. Kid lost his mom. You know, so you're like, OK, like that's totally fine. But then you get fed up. Right. And when do the conversations about gaming happen? Uh, what like uh when do they have oh it's usually on his days off okay yeah yeah try and, to anyway and then like you know like you try to and then I, I get the sense that there's a lot of emotions that kind of pile up and then you need to talk about it right mm -hmm. so that conversation what do you imagine it's like for him to participate in that conversation exhausting <laughs> what's exhausting about it um having to listen to all of the things that he that I would like for him to be doing and he thinks yeah yeah he gets overwhelmed I'm sure you're right right so and the other thing is bless you Charnel <laughs> and you got to let me know if I say anything that's out of line okay can I okay. count on no. you um bless you Charnel you're you're sparing this guy you don't want to bother him on a work day you're taking that one day off he gets <laughs> a week that mm -hmm. one day that he gets to rest and relax and because you don't want to burn him on the other days, you're taking that one day away from him with this stuff. <laughs> right. Right. Mm -hmm. So once again, like from here, 100 percent right, Charnel. Things change, though, as we translate sometimes what we think is right. So so this is the kind of thing where sometimes, you know, I, I'd almost say, like, if it's not working this way, then try it. Try it a different way. And I think a big thing that you should really consider doing is asking questions. Okay. And, and instead of telling him to do stuff, right? Because this is where, like, you're figuring everything out over here. Mm -hmm. But even if we think about this conversation, did I come in and say, hey, Charnel, in five minutes, tell me what's going on. And then I'm going to give you all the answers. I will give you the wisdom. <laughs> okay i'm psychiatrist i'm very smart i will give you the wisdom okay i'll teach you all of the things that i learned in the textbooks and i'm great and all that right so how did this conversation go with with what now conversation how did i approach this conversation with you well, not that way no <laughs> how did i approach it um introduced yourself thanked me um give me a little bit of background of what you do and whatnot yeah and then what um, then you asked me about what my situation was and, and do you feel like I understand your situation? I do. Yes. How do you feel that way? What have I done that indicates my understanding? Because everything that I've told you, you've thought about it and you've, uh, responded with things that, Yes, you're right. This is what does this that does happen. Everything you're saying, yes, that's how it happens. Yeah. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. so that's a technique that we call reflective listening. Okay? okay. So when you say something to me, you're like, well, I don't want you know, I don't want to nag him, but I can't let him just kind of completely run wild. Mm -hmm. Right? He's got to have some discipline. And then I'll, I'll respond to you and I'll say, wow, it sounds like you're really stuck between a rock and a hard place. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Mm -hmm. Right. These are the sentiments that I'll kind of repeat back to you that signals to you. And, and you may say no. You may say, no, it doesn't feel like that at all. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like when I asked about your husband, right, I, to I tossed out a couple of things and you were able to kind of say, like, no, it's not actually not like that. And, you know, my dad was great in some ways. Uh, and I really appreciate that he taught me discipline and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Sounds like he wasn't perfect. No parent is, right? Mm -hmm. So that was a reflection right there. Gotcha. Okay. Right? So mm -hmm. so I'm starting with questions, and then I'm actually not, like, telling you how it is or giving you a plan or anything like that. I'm just saying, I hear you. Here's what I'm hearing. I'm going to repeat it back to you. So what I would strongly recommend is you try that with your husband and sort of sit down and, because like, here's the thing. You're trying to do this all by yourself. And so you're coming up with a plan, right? Because you've taken responsibility, but he's not a part of developing that plan. And so it's going to be hard for him to implement. Mm -hmm. In the same way that I could have showed up and I could have said, Chanel, I will teach you all of the secrets. Wouldn't work. 
Right. Because your ability to implement them, even if it's right or wrong, like you're human. And I can say whatever I want to based on whatever studies that people have done in, in fancy places. But mm-hmm. like your home has its own set of dynamics. Your 19 year old lost his son. I mean, has it lost his mom? Mm-hmm. Right. There's all mm-hmm. kinds of dynamics. There's older brother, younger brother, like kids not doing anything. It's been a year and a half. Like how long does he get to grieve before he has to get up off of his ass? Right. You know, like th- there's just so many complexities here that I can't give you the wisdom. And right. You can't give your husband the wisdom. Mm-hmm. So what y'all really need to do is be on the same p- page and being on the same page doesn't mean, hey, I figured everything out. This is what I want you to do. And he knows you're right. Right. But he just doesn't have the energy, will or whatever to like implement it for whatever mm-hmm. reason. He's got his own internal resistances. Maybe he feels guilty. And mm-hmm. so then the, the issue there is if y'all feel guilty, the solution is don't avoid the behavior that makes you feel guilty. It's to manage that guilt so that you can stick with what needs to be done. Okay. Okay. Guilt is information. It shouldn't control you, but that's, you know, we'll get to that. Right. So what I would strongly recommend is you just sit down and you ask your husband, like, hey, what do you think? Like, what's going on? Like, and even ask for permission for the conversation. Say, hey, I'm trying to figure out, like, how to handle the kids. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think things are working very well. I'm not quite sure what to do. Is there a good time that we can talk about this? Okay. And I'd even, if you feel open to it, even like apologize a little bit or signal to him that, hey, in the past, I know I've kind of like nagged you on this, but that's mm-hmm. not working. I'm not really coming here to say, hey, I need you to do this, this, and this. You know, you're the kid's father. You're you're this kid's stepfather. We've been together for nine years. Both of the boys look up to you. We used to do things like go camping and stuff like that. I'd really like to understand, like, what do you think is going on? You know, what do you think we're doing right? What do you think we're doing wrong? Mm -hmm. What do you think about? And so even tell him, like, when is a good time to talk about something? Like, are you open to talking about this? It's not me nagging you, telling you stuff. It's like, I want to hear from you about what you think is going on. Okay. And then even ask him, when's a good time? And the more that you kind of demonstrate a little bit of insight, you know, normally I like, I I ambush you (laughs) on your days (laughs) off. And I, I just realized that on the one hand, I was kind of thinking, I don't want to bother you on a work day because you work really hard. And, you know, I really appreciate that. On the other hand, I just realized, like, on your days off, sometimes you don't get a day off. <laughs> When's a good time to talk about it? Okay. So the key thing there is that you want to kind of invite him into the conversation because, as you said, he's not even responding. So forget about changing any gaming behavior. The first thing that you've got to do is, like, be able to have a conversation with your husband. That's the goal number one. The rest of it we can sort out later. That is, in my opinion, the most important thing. What do you right. think about that? I think it would be great. I think it would be wonderful to be able to talk about these things. He he tends to, you know, just sh- shut down and just be closed off to any anything like that for the most part. So... Yeah, yeah. So, so, and it's going to be, that's going to be an uphill battle too. So, so, and I think the thing though is that, uh, you know, this is where hopefully my experience can help a little bit. People who shut off, sometimes once the tap is open, boys, there are a lot down there. Yeah. Right. So, I think the key thing there is just going to be using what we call open ended questions. So, mm-hmm. do you think that this is a problem? Do you think, that this is a problem is a yes or no question. Mm -hmm. It doesn't encourage him to say much, right? Because if he says yes, then he's given you ammo to bludgeon him with the next thing. (laughs) And if he says no, then it's an argument. You're like, how on earth can you be so stupid? This is a problem. We all know (laughs) it's a problem, right? Right, right. So just ask him, hey, what do you think is going on? You know, what do you think about your 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 steps on his son like you know what do you think about where like what's going on with him right and really just ask as many questions as you can that are as open-ended help me understand that can you tell me a little bit more about that you can ask some kind of open-ended questions about like you know you can even kind of lay out something so you can share an opinion so you can say something like you know i've been a little bit concerned about so and so since he lost his mom um but I'm not quite sure, like, so I've been kind of like letting things slide, right? You know, giving him time to grieve and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. it's been a year and a half and I don't know 
what to do at this point. Like, I don't know. Do we give him another year? Do we give him five years? Like, I don't right. know. What do you think? Yeah. Right. So okay. if you've got an opinion, don't turn it into a question. And it's okay. okay to even like write some of this stuff down ahead of time mm -hmm. where you can kind of like even say like, hey, I, I came up with a, like a list of things that I wanted to talk about. Is it mm -hmm. okay if I share some of these with you? So ask okay. for permission. And then hopefully you'll get him to open up some. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The goal is not to blame anyone. The goal is not whatever. The goal is like, hey, the attitude to take is you and I are on a team. We're trying to do this. It ain't perfect. All of our hearts are in the right place. These kids are good. Mm -hmm. How can we sort of navigate this together? Okay. So, yeah, questions. Thoughts? Oh, no. Go ahead. <laughs> so I think uh, the other thing is that's also the attitude to take with your kids. Okay. So, like, look, I'm your mom. It's my job to help you, but I can't live your life for you. Mm -hmm. So you can, and hopefully you and your husband can kind of internally decide about what kind of limits to set. Or, you know, and this is where things get a little bit complicated, but you can kind of say like, okay, we can try it your way, but if this does not happen, these are the consequences. Okay. And what I would recommend is that you start with the smallest hill that you're willing to die on. You need to make it so that listening to you is easier for them than dealing with the consequences of not listening to you. So it can okay. be something really simple, like you need to wake up every day on your own. And this is the kind of thing where we almost want to use like disproportionate punishment. If there's a, if a single day goes by that you do not get up, then you mm -hmm. get access to no video games. Okay. If two days go by, then you get to keep your cell phone because you need it for communication, but we're going to uninstall any apps that you use. Okay. If three days go by, you're going to lose your smartphone and we're going to get you a flip phone. <laughs> right? And they can say, Mom, that's unfair. They're going to go to their dad. They're going to be like, this, this lady's crazy. <laughs> and that's what you want to be. But then the key thing is that you're not asking for a whole lot. So this is like kind of behaviorally manipulative in some way, but mm -hmm. it's kind of like the opposite of what we were talking about earlier, where you're saying a lot and doing very little. Now you're mm -hmm. going to say very little and you're going to do a lot, but you're okay. not going to ask for a whole lot. You're just going to pick one thing and you want them to do that. Okay. And then after that, you can say like, hey, I really appreciate that. I think we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. I'm just kind of mapping this out. But I'd say the first thing to really focus on is a conversation with your husband and the next thing to really think about is a conversation with your kids, where hopefully the four of y'all can talk together. And by mm -hmm. the way, this conversation with your husband, that's the first conversation. So usually this takes, honestly, four to six weeks where, okay. you know, you need to talk to your husband, you know, an hour a week, every week and sort of let him know that, hey, like before I do anything, like, can we spend a couple of weeks just talking about this? Okay. And I don't mean a couple of weeks with me lecturing you because <laughs> I'm frustrated. What I mean is like, let's really try to understand like mm -hmm. what's the impact of grief on gaming? What's okay. the impact of your 19 year old in the house who has no limits because we're giving him time to grieve? And what does the 16 year old think? Right? Yeah. And so you can lay out as many of these things as you want to and say like, hey, I just really want to understand, you know, what do you think? Um, and, and by all means, let the, the let the conversation go as wide as it can. Hey, like, what do you think about us? Like, why don't we go camping anymore? Mm -hmm. Right. And it could be something as simple as like getting your kids to go camping once where you don't let them say no. Okay. Where you kind of, and then the conversation with your kids is also somewhat similar where it's like, look, your dad and I are here. Like what's our job as parents? Mm -hmm. like, even asking them, what do you think the responsibility of a parent is? What do you think the responsibility of a parent is? Sure. No. What do I think? Are yeah. you asking me? To, yeah. Um, to guide our children um, in the right direction, hopefully, to so where they become independent, uh, able to grow as a person, um, be good people, be kind to others. Um, yeah, all that stuff. Have a good life, you know, just, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's I beautiful, that. right? So I, I think that it's your job to prepare your children. Mm-hmm to be kind, to mm -hmm. have a good life, to get a lot of joy, mm -hmm. you know, to fall in love, be happy, yeah. be, happy be healthy, 
mm-hmm. have self-respect. Because right now, like your kids are probably already struggling, especially a 19 year old, I imagine is struggling some with self-respect and like, it's only going to go one direction if th- things keep going the way they're going. Yeah. And so, and this is the kind of thing where leniency, I don't think is actually like, and I know this sounds kind of weird, but I don't think you're actually doing your job as a parent. I think that your job as a parent is getting clouded by your feelings Mm -hmm. and is getting clouded by your circumstances. Yeah. But I I don't, and I know this sounds weird and you got to let me know how this feels if I say this, but like, Mm -hmm. you know, I I think this is not what a parent should be doing. I'm not blaming you. Do you do that? Yes. And and maybe it's harsh for me to say, maybe I should take that back, but I, I, I I, I don't, I I think it's hard because it's just hard. I mean, you've, made it very clear why it's hard for you to be a good parent in this situation. Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. dealing with your own guilt. You're dealing with leniency on your husband's part. You know, it's really hard. Mm-hmm. But really kind of point out to them that, hey, I'm doing this for you. And yeah. y'all, so you tell me, like, talk to the 19-year-old, what do you want from life? Yes. Right? And so what we sort of recommend with with parents is that you start to understand what values are important to your kids. Mm-hmm. Also, what your kids are struggling with, right? So you can ask them, "What do you like about your life every day, and what do you wish was different?" Open-ended questions. Okay. And then, even if they say, "I wish this was different," then you can say, "Okay, like, what do you want me to do about that? Is this something that you want to handle? Do you want me to take some responsibility? Do you want me to push you?" Mm-hmm. You know, and, and really enroll them primarily through conversation. So the one thing that we've learned is that you can't fix video game addiction for somebody else. Can't do it, Charnel. If any yeah. mom on the planet could do it, it would be you and it would have been done <laughs> and we wouldn't be having this conversation. <laughs> so really the main thing I'm hearing from you is that you're fighting an uphill battle and you're fighting it alone. Yeah. And so you're forced into these situations where you've had to adapt into doing like things that get the job d- done today, but shoot you in the foot for tomorrow. Because now your kid is dependent on mom coming in at 730. You know, why don't you just come in at like, you know, five minutes before he has to leave and say, hey, school's in five minutes. <laughs> and then what's he going to do? You know, what yeah. would he do if you did that? What would he do? He'd probably lay in bed and not get up. Actually. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Because some kids, what they'll do is they'll get mad at their moms. Be like, why didn't oh, you wake me yeah. up earlier? Yeah, exactly. He's done that before too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? And yeah, now it's suddenly, because who's who's responsible? You're responsible. Mm-hmm. You take that responsibility, and he's like, ah, "Great, mom, you take it." <laughs> yeah. And even when you come wake me up with not enough time to shower, it's not my problem; it's your problem. Mm-hmm. So, I, 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 and there are a couple of other things, you know. So, I, I would really recommend like a small thing that you guys can lean into that'll have a minimum amount of resistance, and even on a weekly basis. It sounds mm-hmm. like you guys have a pretty good foundation of like. They're not isolated from the family. It sounds like you guys really do things as a family unit. Yes. And, and so I, I think that, you know, maybe like trying to go camping or something like that. I know the weather it sounds like you're from the U.S. Um, yes. Yeah. So, Oklahoma. Okay. So like the weather's brutal yeah. right now. I don't know that anyone can yeah. go camping anywhere. But, <laughs> Very um, hot. It, you know, I, I think once things cool down a little bit, like maybe really trying to be intentional and getting everybody out of the house and spending some quality time together. Um mm-hmm. I think a couple of other simple things. So like, yeah, I think there's other stuff, but I, I, I don't, I, I don't want to overburden you because I think actually the most important thing for you, what, what are you, what are you hearing from me? Actually, let me ask you that first. Um, I'm hearing, um, that I'm not doing my job. Um, but that don't, I don't mean that's, that's not a bad thing though. I, I need to hear that. I really do because you're right. I mean, I, I guess it takes someone else to step in, you know, that doesn't knows nothing about us personally to sit, you know, sit back and take in everything I've said in order for them to, you know, say, Hey, you're not doing your job. You're not doing the right thing. And, um, I don't feel, I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel, um, I just feel like, yeah, I need to step up and do. Yeah. So let's be clear about one thing. Sure. Why aren't you doing your job? Um, because (laughs) I'm not sure. So here's, here's what I see. 
I think okay. the reason you're not doing your job right is because you're trying to do three others at the same time. Oh, okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So I really don't blame you for that. And I, I, I you know, maybe I mis misstepped there and sort of sharing it with you in that way. But I, I really don't, you know, I think it's no. like you're lifting too much and you just can't do the work of four people. So, of course, your own stuff is going to fall short. Mm-hmm. Okay. What else are you hearing me say? Um... That I'm, my heart, my heart is in it, but um, I'm, everything I'm trying to do comes from the heart, I guess, and I mean well, but I just need to take a different approach to, and ask questions, and rather than give out, dish out orders and whatnot, so. Um, you know why those orders don't work? Why is that? Because you're not your dad. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So it worked for him, because he it was did. willing to go the distance. Mm -hmm. And are you willing to go the distance? Yes. No, you're not. And that's a no. good thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, sorry, I, I, I'm being a little oh, bit like, vague. Like my dad. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 not at all. Right now, do you get it? Yes. That's why shouting orders doesn't work. Because when it comes to that line, you've decided I'm not going to cross that line. Yeah, right. So you can't do his strategy 70% of the way and expect the same. It worked for him. Because mm -hmm. he was willing to go that extra mile, which I think it makes you a good mother that you're you learned, right? I'm not gonna do that, right? But then it's like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna make cake batter and I'm gonna get a nice pile of cake batter, but I'm not gonna put it in the oven. And it's like then it's not cake. You can go seventy percent of the way there, but you got to go the whole way if you want to use that strategy, right? Okay. So yeah, what else are you hearing me say? Um, I don't know. Okay. So that's why I ask, right? So I, and how, how does it feel when I ask that question? Um, I'm just really confused, right? I'm not confused, but just, I just everything that you're telling me seems very overwhelming. Like it's going to be a lot of work and a lot, a lot, a lot of work. And it makes me, sometimes it, well, no, it's making me feel like it's work that I'm probably going to be doing on my own. A lot of work from myself, and I don't know if everybody's going to be willing to get on the boat with me to do this. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much for sharing that. So let's tackle that. Okay. So you are 100% right that I am trying to pack in. I realized subconsciously what I was trying to do. We have a whole course on how to do this. Mm -hmm. So because it, it, it's a course, it's like takes a couple of months. And I right. realize what I'm trying to do is actually squeeze that course into one hour. <laughs> right. And so you being overwhelmed has nothing to do with you. And it has everything to do with I'm trying to watch five movies in an hour and a half. That's not fair to you. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I'm noticing is that anything that I tell you to do, Charnel, how much bandwidth you got left? How much you got left in the tank? <laughs> right not yeah. much yeah and so you're already overwhelmed you're already out of gas yeah so then let me dispense with a lot of what i said and let me tell you to focus on just one thing the sure. one thing that's going to change all of this is like you said i don't know if i can do all this alone you're damn right you cannot mm -hmm. so the one thing that you've got to do forget about everything else i said don't worry about that enforcement stuff don't worry about waking them up in the morning don't worry about any of that stuff have a conversation with your husband because you cannot okay. do it alone. And the first right. thing that we're going to do to help you feel less overwhelmed is get you an ally. Take right now it's 1v3. If it turns into 2v2, my money's on you. Okay. That's that may that right there is probably going to be the most difficult thing. I think eventually, you know, the kids will they'll they'll get it eventually, you know, they will, but getting I do feel so many days and so many times that it's just I am I feel like I am alone in this and I don't know if he's willing to back me up and have my back you know and I've even spoken with him about this before and I even told him I said you know I will always have your back no matter what even if you're wrong I mean I'll still have your back but you know out in public but once we get home I'll say hey you were wrong but you know um it's just I, I wish he had my back more often and he doesn't, it feels like. And that makes me very sad sometimes because I'll always have his back. But 
I, f I feel like he's kind of, yeah, left me up in the cold, so to speak, you know? Sounds like we're yeah. talking about more than just gaming here. Yes. Well, no, not real. I mean, maybe a little bit, but okay. nothing. Yeah. So is this not having your back thing is mostly around this gaming stuff or is it like another? Yeah. Just have, yeah. When it comes to the kids and whatnot. Yeah. That's, a, that's all it is. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, so, so sure. yeah. And, and I, I think that like, oddly enough, Charnel, I, I think you're right. And I think that this is the kind of thing where you kind of say this is the hardest part and it still feels to me like the most important because you can't do it alone. Right. But you may be able to, if you were willing to do maybe what your dad did or, you know, be mm -hmm. willing to do other things, but I'm not hearing that you are, which is fine. I, I think it's, um, and so I, I absolutely hear you. I hear a lot of, you know, walking uphill in the snow by yourself at nighttime, mm -hmm. right? I, I hear a lot of loneliness. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, right? And, mm -hmm. and like, I don't think you can be hopeful until that gets addressed. Right. Oh, so yeah. We're, we're not even talking about your kids. We're talking about your marriage and communication and stuff like that. The one thing that I can assure you is that the good news is that when parents do this, like when we teach people this kind of stuff, it usually gets them in a different path, like pretty pretty good, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think that even just something as simple as having a couple of conversations, it may take a little while, mm -hmm. but really trying to listen instead of speak. And, okay. And, and really that's because if you want to be on the same page with someone like, it's about listening, not about teaching. Okay. Right? Because I, I told you to do a bunch of stuff, and what was your response? Yeah, I was confused and overwhelmed. Absolutely, <laughs> Absolutely right? So mm -hmm. I made the same mistake that you made, which is that, hey, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. Mm -hmm. And you can be as willing of a participant as you want to, and I can be as brilliant as I am, and it's still <laughs> not going to work. Right. And when we were really making, moving together, I think it's when I did a better job of listening to you and understanding you. Okay. And so th that's really what I would say is like focus on open-ended questions. So what's an example of an open-ended question? Um, what do you think is going on with your son? Beautiful, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And um, how are you going to engage, how are you going to approach your husband about that conversation? Um, hey, babe, when would be a good time that you and I could sit down and have a conversation about something? Okay, so I would rework that a little bit, right? Because that's, is it okay if I use a little bit of profanity? Sure, of course, yeah. It's fucking scary for him. Right? Yeah. So if your oh, yeah. partner's like, hey, I'm hoping we can sit down and have a conversation about something. Are you like free next Tuesday? <laughs> like, can we sit down and like have a talk? Like, babe, we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna right. come in show, uh, closed off okay and that's mm -hmm. it's, it's not it, everyone's got to learn this i had to learn this it took me four years to learn this by the way i had to like <laughs> literally go to school to learn this okay <laughs> where i had people watching me day in and day out watching me talk to people and giving me pointers so you're doing great so <laughs> really just tell them hey i've been worried a lot about this this is not working I realize that I'm trying to run the show. I'm trying to tell everyone what to do, but I don't have any idea like what you think we should do. And I'd really True, like, I don't. yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, I'd really like to understand like, you know, what do you think we should do? I need your help with this. Okay. Can we find some time to talk about it? Okay. How does that yeah. sound? That sounds a lot better. <laughs> right? So you yes. let him know where you're coming from, what you're looking for, mm -hmm. even explicitly asking for help. Hey, I need your help with this. Mm -hmm. Can we just talk about it? I'm not telling you to do anything. I've tried that. doesn't work. Right. Right? Right. You know, like you tell me, like, babe, help me out here. Like, what are we going to do? This isn't moving in the right direction. Or if, if, if you think it is moving in the right direction, you're telling me that I should relax, then, like, I'm ready to hear that. It's me okay. who hasn't been listening. So I'd love to understand your perspective. Okay. Right? And that's also going to sound a little bit weird from him because Charnel doesn't talk like that, but that's okay. <laughs> um, and, and really what I'm hearing is forget everything else, honestly, Charnel. Just have a conversation as many as you can get away with with your husband. Okay. And try to have more than one. And even sort of at the end of the conversations, repeat back to him what you heard. 
You know, you can say, hey, I heard you say this. I heard you say this. I heard you say this. Is it okay if I think about this for a little while? Can we, this was great. Like, what do you think about this conversation? So in the same way mm-hmm. that I asked you, what are you hearing me say? What do you think about it? Ask him for feedback at the end. Okay. Okay. And um, I know we're, I'm spitting a lot of tips at you as well. So we're going to have to figure out how to get those to you later. Okay. okay. That's, yeah. But, you know, so just ask for permission to have the conversation, invite him in, open-ended questions, and then express some amount of appreciation or summarize, and then ask mm-hmm. for another one. Okay. okay. So ask for permission, have the conversation. A lot of open-ended questions. Don't offer your own opinion unless he asks. Okay. And then reflect back what you hear. And then really try to empathize, like, you know, if he says, like, yeah, I don't know what to do. And then that's the kind of place where you want to say, like, yeah, I, I, I see it's hard. Like, the boy did lose his mom, you know, and, like, I wouldn't, you know, I don't know what to do either. Mm-hmm. And then the key thing is that right now he's over here and you're over here. But as you guys have these conversations, y'all are going to be on the same team. And if you can get there, I know it's a tall order. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hear that. I really do. I also hear, though, that he's a good husband and a good father and a good person. And that, generally speaking, y'all want the same things for your kids. Mm -hmm. So where it counts, you guys are already like this. Mm -hmm. It's just about changing the communication a little bit. It'd be a completely different story if he was in a completely different place. Yeah. But you've got a really solid ally that you just need to activate in some way. And listening is the best way to do it. Okay. Okay. How are you feeling now? Better. Um, it it's doable. I I know I can do my part in this, and uh, at least try anyway. But I, I, he's going to have to. I think he'll be more willing to meet me halfway, or you know, at least take a few baby steps towards me if I can approach it that way, instead of being all yeah harsh and whatnot. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And and I really loved you you changed what you said. So like like I, like this is the kind of thing where if this does end up getting uploaded, I want you to go back and watch just this part. Okay. Where you said, "I feel this is doable. Well, I feel like I can do my part. Well, I feel like I can try." Beautiful. Do you understand the difference between mm. those three things, right? It's an acknowledgement yeah. that you're not responsible for all this. And that actually failure is an option. And whether you feel guilty or not, you may reflexively feel guilty. But I I think that the appropriate guilt is if you gave it your best shot and other people don't want to do it. Can't live their lives for them. Right. Right. And so lean into that part of like what you can do instead of taking all the responsibility. That in and of itself, because this is the thing. If I do the dishes every day, my spouse isn't going to. I can nag them, but if their tolerance for dirty dishes in the sink is higher than mine, I'm going to crack anyway after two days of nagging them. So so that surrendering of responsibility, I think, is another huge thing that I'm really happy to hear the way that you caught yourself. That, by the way, is your brain rewiring, (laughs) literally. So like you have a default way that you used to speak, and then Uh you're you're connecting new neurons. And so then you catch yourself in your old way of speaking and then you speak in a new way. It's a good job. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Questions? Um, no, no, I think I'm good. Um, yeah. What was this experience like for you? It was, I'm probably going to, get off here and just take a big deep breath and sigh and just be like it's just gonna be all yeah fantastic okay so that's what we're shooting for i know it's overwhelming i know it's a lot that's what happens every time we have one of these conversations Mm -hmm. but uh, you know hopefully i'm pretty sure a chunk of it has sunk in yes and then um i just want to wish you the best of luck charnel well thank you appreciate that i i've seen which kids end up doing poorly and which can kids end up doing well and mm-hmm. the number one factor is parents who care you may not know how to do it because the world has changed but you're trying and that is the most important thing mm-hmm. so i'm i'm optimistic for your kids 
<laughs> Thank you. Me too. Um, yeah, I think if really, if we can just be on that same team, like you said, I think the whole gaming stuff will, will I mean, because they'll see that we both want good things for them and the, but that we both want these certain things and we both have these certain, um, you know, beliefs for them or whatever, you know, then they'll kind of see the light, I guess, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole, yeah. there's a lot of other stuff to do, but I think starting here is the right step. Right. See, yeah. I would have not thought that at all. I would have thought it would have been the kids first and not my husband, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. It yeah. makes sense. Yeah. And, and what you were thinking makes sense too, right? So like we fix the problem where it is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if my sink is leaking, like I don't go repair the garage. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, I think, you know, everything that you're telling me really demonstrates to me that you're a dedicated mother, a dedicated wife, your heart's in the right place, and you've spent a lot of time thinking about it, trying this, trying that, experimenting, really putting 110% into this. Yes. And that's awesome. Like, that's what that's what leads to success. So good luck to you, Sharno. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you very, very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. You've given me this opportunity to speak with you, and you... Yeah, that's been great. It's thank you. I mean, I, I think we're, we're hoping that a lot of people will benefit from this conversation. And I feel really good about it because a lot of parents are in the same situation you're in. Mm -hmm. um, is there any part, let me just ask you while we're talking, is there any part of this interview that you feel not good about? No. Okay. No. Okay. No. Okay. I feel good about it all. Yes. Okay. All right. And, um, you know, if that ever changes at some point, just let us know. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so, okay. so much for coming. All right. Great. Thank you Bye. for having me. Thank you.